This is a brief summary of an investigation into the origin of the myostatin NTA21 mutation in highland cattle performed by Cambus Glen Highlands. Our interest in NTA21 in highlands stemmed from the fact that our stock bull on the left was found to be a carrier, and this has had a very significant impact on our fold. As background, in November 2023, highland breeders became aware of the detection of the myostatin NTA21 gene mutation in highland cattle uh, detected in Germany. Testing soon confirmed carrier animals present in all highland populations, and since then there has been much speculation as to the source of the NTA21 mutation. Some of the speculation has been ill-informed and disrespectful of some reputable current and past breeders. As the different highland breed societies have been grappling with how to manage this issue, this has unfortunately led to the demonization of carrier animals and a reluctance to publicly share test results. With this limited information available, we asked ourselves the question, how can you analytically identify potential carriers and ultimately the primary carrier animal that introduced NTA21 in highlands? We did this through a probabilistic pedigree analysis. Firstly, we made a few assumptions, notably that NTA21 has been around for several decades. NTA21 is widespread, but there is a small number of carrier animals in the population, and the ancestry, ancestry of a carrier can be traced through the different herd books and ultimately to a herd book foundation animal. By comparing the pedigree of known tested carrier animals and then looking for shared ancestors, probable NTA21 carrier animals can be identified, and we'll briefly explain how we did this. Um, this would be a typical pedigree of one of our highland cattle. By looking at our herd books, we should be able to trace the parents, the grandparents, the great grandparents, and ultimately drill down to the foundation animals of a herd book. If we were then to test our animal A and find it to be a, a carrier, through Mendelian genetics, we know that there will be a continuous line of carriers through the pedigree of that animal. But there's no way of knowing which of these animals are carriers with our testing. If we, however, look at, for example, two animals that are known carriers, uh, we know again that there will be a line of carriers in each. And if these two animals are genetically sufficiently diverse and we go look for shared ancestors that exist in both animals, this now starts becoming interesting and, and does hint at uh, potential carriers. But of course, depending on how genetically diverse they are, it could also just purely be shared ancestors. If we, however, now have a larger sample of known carrier animals that are sufficiently genetically diverse and we search for shared ancestors, the larger the sample size and the more genetic diversity, the more probable it becomes that these shared ancestors are actually carriers. The key here is that for this analysis to be accurate, we need as many tested and confirmed carrier animals, and they need to be as genetically diverse as possible, because then the more accurate the prediction of potential carrier animal animals become. It's however important to emphasize that this is a probabilistic analysis only, and the only way to confirm the status of an animal would be through testing. Another key critical part is that our pedigrees need to be sufficiently accurate and go back far enough to be useful. We know that there are several independent but related herd books for Highland cattle. The primary herd book obviously is the UK herd book, but there are herd books in the USA, Canada, Australia, and even some smaller breed societies. When we started looking at the herd books of these carrier animals, we found that these herd books are actually generally very poorly integrated and rife with errors. One interesting observation is that animals exported from the UK who did not have UK offspring were generally, but not always, removed from the UK herd book. So especially in the USA and Canadian herd books, there are references to what appears to be animals in the UK herd book, but once you go search for them, um, they do not exist on the online version of the herd book. Now, to be able to trace the pedigrees of our animals of interest back to a herd book foundation animal, you need to go back typically 60 to 80 years or roughly 10 generations. To put that in context for 10 generations of pedigree, the total number of potential ancestors in a pedigree for each animal is 
a very large number, obviously two parents, four grandparents, eight great grandparents, on and on and on. Roughly 2,046 individual animals in a 10 generation pedigree. It is clear that it would be impossible to do any kind of pedigree analysis manually when you have this number of animals to try and manage. So we set about building an integrated digital Highland pedigree database that merges all the different key herd books in a form that it becomes usable. And this was as much fun as it sounds. Currently, we have more than 14,000 individual animals in our database. And this database now allows us to use computerized search and sorting algorithms to analyze the data. Here is an example of a pedigree for one of our animals of interest, Amprianza odara Barnsley. This pedigree only shows the first seven generations, so it's only 256 uh, animals presented. Um, just to give you an idea of what we were trying to achieve, if we zoom into a animal weather hill fern there, there is an animal US based, but it has a Canadian sire, which then transfers into a UK great grandsire. And this is essentially what we needed to achieve is a pedigree that travels and navigates through all these different herd books. The first group of animals we looked at, uh, we call our North American cluster, which I'll explain in a sec. Firstly, currently, there really are only two publicly disclosed carriers. Um, these are on the website of Barnsley Highland, and Dr. Glenn Hasty of Barnsley Highland has been one of the pioneers promoting transparency around NTA21. Obviously, two animals are just not sufficient to try and get any kind of reliable prediction. But again, with further assistance from Glenn, we managed to add a further 13 heterozygous and one homozygous animal. These animals were all USA animals with significant Canadian influence, a total of 17 carriers identified. And Ambryon, so if you look at him, is, is North American and Seamus do, although he's a UK registered animal, quickly shows you that essentially has very strong USA and Canadian influence. And that's why we call this initial group of animals our North American cluster. We developed the pedigrees for each of these to 10 generations. And just to put it in context, theoretically, 17 carriers with more than 2,000 ancestors, uh, almost 35,000 potential unique ancestors. But of course, our Highland gene pool is much smaller than that. And in fact, once we completed the pedigrees, we only found roughly 2,800 unique animals identified. And when we went to look for animals that are shared, that are present in every one of these carrier pedigrees, it dropped down to 18 animals only 0.05% of the total. And what did we find? Here's a full list of all the shared ancestors present in every pedigree, um, sorted roughly by their average position in the pedigree relative to the known carriers. Um, so a lot of animals, but if you look at Exhibit and Lilius, they are the sire and dam respectively of Leotis. They add no further information. So if we just strip out all the ancestors of each animal, we end up with a much shorter list. Um, and we've identified Leotis of Duneside and Kalamur of Belmuik. So in summary, we believe the most likely carrier vector that introduced NTA21 to North America is Leotis of Duneside. By vector, we mean a physically translocated genetic package, either semen, embryo, or live animal that was exported from one location to another. Now, Leotis is no big surprise. In fact, some astute observers have already uh, identified Leotis as an animal of interest with relation to NTA21. Leotis was born in the UK in 1971 and imported to Canada in 1973 by Glen Osprey Farms. The only other candidate primary carrier, and primary carrier meaning the earliest identified potential carrier, is Kalamur of Balmuik, and we'll talk about him a little bit later. He was born in 1945 in the UK and can be found in the pedigree of several influential USA and Canadian animals. Very importantly note that no North American animal was flagged as a potential primary NTA21 carrier. Here's just a little bit of information on Leotis, and, and I'm only showing Leotis because that's the only information I could find on, on these animals. This was a write-up by Jacob Larson, can be found on his Facebook page, and it very succinctly explains um, the huge influence that 
Leodis had on Glen Osprey Farms breeding, and in turn, Glen Osprey Farm obviously having a very large impact on North American genetics. And here's a picture of a mature Leodis. Now, just to quickly show you, which I found quite interesting, is how each animal that gets added to our list of carriers starts refining the analytical results. This is the list of animals we had after 15 carriers were included in our analysis. Um, so here we still had a few other animals, Seamus of Olva, um, an animal there, Jock the Fourth of Lays. When we added the 16th animal, it immediately stripped out two of these potential carriers, and that's just because of the genetic diversity. These animals do not exist in the pedigree line, and if we added a 17th animal, a 17th animal it stripped it on even further, and that just briefly explains the iterative nature that the more carriers you have and the more genetically diverse, the more it strips it down um, with a number of potential carriers. The UK connection. Um, recently, in the last few weeks, we became aware of a carrier bull born in 2023 registered in the UK. Um, again, with assistance from Glenn, we uh, found out that his sire is NTA21 free tested, which means we were only interested in his dam. And quick analysis showed that she was a UK animal from UK bloodlines only. We developed the pedigree of this dam and added her to our analysis. We now ended up with almost 3,000 unique animals identified, and we've dropped down to 16 animals or 0.04% that are present in every carrier pedigree. This is this iterative nature of as we add more carriers to the, the analysis. And what did we find? Here's again the full list of all the animals identified. Let's analyze, strip out the ancestors, and we end up with this list of animals. Conclusions. Um, the likely primary NTA21 carriers that we've identified through our analysis is these following three animals. Um, exhibit was born in 1963, has 51 registered offspring, including 11 influential bulls, um, and he was the sire of Leodis. Lilius was born in 1961, has three registered offspring uh, in the UK herd book, and was the dam of Leodis. Callum Moore, born in 1945, seven registered offspring, and, and his presence is mainly felt through uh, the very influential uh, Viking of Strathallan, which he was the sire of. In summary, uh, I think our analysis provides compelling evidence that NT81 was introduced into the Highland breed in the UK sometime prior to the 1960s. Here's a picture of exhibit, again, for no other reason that that's the only one I could find, a beautiful traditional looking Scottish bull. What now? Um, we hope that these results have shown that when it comes to NTA21 and Highlands, there are no simple answers and believe that we have presented compelling evidence to suggest that the NTA21 mutation was introduced into the breed in the UK and has been in the breed for a very long time. Our analysis, however, remains probabilistic in nature, and it's only through testing of analyzing, testing of animals and analyzing the data that we will get to the truth and ultimately the data will set us free. We now believe there is sufficient evidence to suggest that breeders in the UK should not be complacent. And even if their herds do not contain any North American genetics, it is probably prudent to test for NTA21. We ask any breeders, especially breeders from the UK who have confirmed carrier animals to share this data with us so that we can further refine this analysis and get closer to the truth. But understand that all animals, carry animals disclosed will be treated in total confidentiality. We are ultimately not interested in a specific animal. We are really only interested in their pedigree. So we will respect confidentiality. Um, if you have any questions or any information you're willing to share, please feel free to reach out to us on the um, email address listed. Thank you.